In this lab, we'll be investigating the process of mitosis, meiosis, and perhaps some Mendelian genetics as well. You may need to do a little bit of pre-lab reading to get caught up. Our basic learning goals. We're going to answer questions regarding ploidy and the stages of mitosis and meiosis. We're going to model the stages of mitosis and meiosis, use a microscope to find and identify cells in various stages of mitosis, and solve some basic genetics problems using uh, Punnett squares. So I'll give you a little bit of background. Each of your somatic cells, so your basic body cells, contains 46 chromosomes. These chromosomes occur in homologous pairs. So what do I mean by that? Let's say we look at chromosome number one. You have two chromosomes that are chromosome number one, one you inherited from your mom, one you inherited from your dad. And you already know this about sex chromosomes. You inherit an X from mom and an X from dad if you're biologically female, or an X and a Y if you're biologically male, so on and so forth. Um, this happens for every one of our chromosomes, however. We get one from mom, one from dad. Cells that have pairs of chromosomes are said to be diploid, diploid or 2N. So when I say ploidy, I'm asking is it haploid or is this cell diploid? And 2N just means two times the haploid number. So in the case of human somatic cells, we have 46 chromosomes. In the case of our gametes, we have 23 in our gametes, in our sperm and egg. So the diploid num number will be two times 23, which is 46. And when mitosis occurs, we take a cell like this, this one has 46 chromosomes, and we'd simply replicate it, making another copy. Right before we go into mitosis, we go through this phase known as S phase of the cell cycle in which DNA replicates. And when that happens, the chromosomes, uh, once they condense, will look like this. And they consist of two sister chromatids. So this is one chromosome, but it's two identical sticks of DNA stuck together. So what do we mean by that? Well, DNA replicates, right? And in order for it to all fit in your cell and to get ready to move around during the process of mitosis or meiosis, that DNA uh, is tightly wound up around histone proteins, like we see here, and that's further coiled up to fit in your cell. And during uh, mitosis or meiosis, it coils up even more, making the familiar chromosome. So we copy the DNA and S phase, the cell enlarges a bit, gets ready to divide in the G2 phase, and then we enter into M phase, or the mitotic phase, which consists of several stages. We're not going to worry about prometaphase so much in lab. Maybe we'll model it, but we won't look for it under a microscope. So we'll go from prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and then finally telophase and cytokinesis. Notice that during anaphase, the uh, sister chromatids separate into daughter chromosomes and then are pulled to opposite ends of the cell uh, via the, the uh, cytoskeleton here, the, in this case the mitotic spindle, and then we produce two cells at the end that are identical to one another. When we look for this in the lab uh, under a microscope, we're going to look at a slide made from an onion root tip. And when you're looking for them, I, I need you to look towards the end of the root, not at the very bottom. The very bottom is a root cap. That's a protective region on the root. But just go just behind that to this area here. This is known as the uh, root apical meristem. A meristem is an area on a plant where mitosis happens. And if you zoom in there to full power, so 400x, you'll be able to see cells at various stages of mitosis. If you go too far up the root, you're going to end up finding very mature cells that are not dividing at that point. So stick to this area and start at low power and then zoom all the way in to full power uh, and dim your light a little bit to make sure you, you can see everything just fine. Play with that a little bit and be careful not to ram your slide into your lens. So find focus only once you're at full power. Now meiosis is another type of cell division we'll model today. And just to remind you how this works, meiosis produces cells that end up having half the number of chromosomes as the somatic cells. So this is how plants make spores. This is how humans make gametes, or you know, a lot of animals make gametes. And independent assortment occurs during this uh, process as well as crossing over, which adds to variation uh, in the gametes of the spores that are produced. 
And when we produce a cell by this, once again, the cells uh, that are made at the end of meiosis are haploid, meaning they do not have a homologous partner, so they're said to be N or 1N. In the case of a human uh, egg or sperm, there would be 23 chromosomes in uh, those cells. A quick rundown during prophase one, chromosomes pair up and begin the process of crossing over. Uh, metaphase one, they line up on the metaphase plate and they can line up in different ways. So in this case, there's a maternal, maternal, and a paternal chromosome on top, but they could have all been maternal or they could have all been paternal on top or any combination thereof. So that's independent assortment. Um, it'll be easier to understand once you model it a couple times. Then during anaphase one, homologous chromosomes separate and now it's clear, you can clearly see that crossing over has occurred among some of the uh, non-sister chromatids on homologous chromosomes. Then a cleavage furrow occurs and we divide the cell into two. Now, as we move into uh, meiosis two, each one of these cells is going to once again divide again. But just one more thing before I move on, I wanna point out that these two cells that are being formed here are haploid now because each one has three chromosomes in it, whereas the original cell we started with had six chromosomes in it. Okay, now each of these cells begins to divide again. We line up the chromosomes now in a single file line at the metaphase plate, and homologous, or I'm sorry, sister chromatids pull apart into daughter chromosomes, just like we saw in mitosis. And then we form, in this case, at the end, four new haploid cells, each one is genetically different than the rest. Now, thanks to the process of independent assortment, even if we don't take into account crossing over, we can end up with a number of different possibilities uh, in terms of chromosome combinations in those resulting cells. And what we see here are cells uh, in metaphase one showing you the different ways chromosomes could have lined up on the metaphase plate. So this is a cell with a diploid number of six. And so to calculate the number of ways chromosomes could line up on the metaphase plate, you take two to the haploid power. So two to the power of three, and so that's eight total different ways chromosomes could have lined up in this particular cell. And you might have to think about that a little bit, what that means, how that works. The best way to do this is to draw it or to model it like we'll do in lab this week. Don't ever just listen to an instructor babble on about something like this and go, okay, I think I got it. Make sure you got it. And how do you make sure you got it? You draw it, you model it, you, uh, you make it your own. So here are a few questions uh, and I have the answers on here. Uh, so think about them and, and you know you can pause this video and read them and see if you understand them because you will be answering questions like this in lab. I'll do the first one with you. If a diploid cell, 2N of 8, undergoes mitosis, how many chromosomes would the resulting daughter cells have? The answer, once again, 2N of 8 because you are making replications, duplications of that original cell. Okay? You can read the rest on your own. So come to lab ready, and we're going to uh, have you work in tables, and you're going, everyone at your table is going to have to answer questions, and if anyone at your table can't answer it, then you may miss out on points. So it's going to be very important to peer instruct this week. You have to help everyone at your table to get to the same level of knowledge before you call me over to answer, uh, to ask you, and ha uh, ask you questions and have you model these processes. You need to make sure everyone understands what's going on. All right, I'll see you in lab.